Hello, everyone, and welcome to iCritic Live. This is the podcast where we talk about movies, pop culture, and life in between. I am Kevin T. Rodriguez, film critic of iCritic.net, and I will be your host. Thank you for spending a few minutes of your time with me today. And, you know, I had a few things I want to talk about this week on iCritic Live, and uh, I actually did record at least one episode. I recorded an episode about the completionist in his career. I've decided to put that on hold. It'll probably be released sometime later this week or next week because that's a topic that hasn't really gone away. I also want to talk a little bit about uh, the Harry Potter series and why people who are against J.K. Rowling might actually be hurting their own cause by some of the things they are saying. But I decided to hold off on that one for a few days as well because I remembered that in a few days, because I'm recording this Saturday, but you will probably hear it Monday, so... If this goes up Monday, this will be tomorrow morning, there will be the Oscar nominations. The Oscars! This is my Super Bowl every single year. I don't watch the World Series, could care less about what the big game is. I know there's a lot of um, 49ers fans out there. No offense to you. Don't care if they win or not. If you root for them, though, I hope they do win because, you know, it's fun to see your team win from what I understand. But I do love the Oscars. And so I love to see who's going to get in, who's going to not get in, who gets snubbed. And even though I disagree with the final choices a lot of the time, as most of us do, because, you know, it's not exactly a science, these awards. They're just, you know, they're awards. They're, you know, it's to a certain extent a publicity uh, marketing stunt as well. The Oscars were invented to bring legitimacy to the movies. And then they realized that putting an Oscar on the poster meant that more people go see it. Now, that has not happened for a while, but this Oscar race is shaping up to be particularly fun because we're looking at a potential rematch of Barbenheimer. Like Barbie won the box office, but will Oppenheimer win the awards? And, you know, we've got potentially um, a second win for Hayao Miyazaki for best animated feature. Will Disney be completely shut out of the animated feature category? What actors and actresses are going to be snubbed? And so for this episode, I am going to do what my five um, no guts, no glories calls would be. Now, Awards Daily, this is something that Sasha Stone did called like, you know, predict something really out there. Now, I'm not saying I'm going to predict these, although I think at least one of these has a legitimate shot at actually getting a nomination tomorrow morning. But if I, when I'm watching, well, not if, like when I'm watching the nominations, if any of these happen, I will be so happy because they're not favored to get nominations per se. But again, these nominations make me really happy. And so I'm going to um, share them. Now I've limited myself to one category. Um, So you're not gonna see me pick like five movies for best picture. I would love to see that's not gonna happen. If I, I have to stick with one pick for best picture. And uh, who knows, I might actually even add a six just for the heck of it. So um, now I also wanna take this moment to advertise that tomorrow on X, this will be the first podcast that we're gonna be doing on X Live. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the Oscar nominations and the reason we're doing it on X is because I want to include you guys in the conversation and X's live podcasting service makes it very easy to let people in and out of the rooms. And so I'm going to say about 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we will talk about the Oscar nominations on X. And uh, I would really like you to be there to hear your thoughts on what you liked and what you felt was disappointing and all that jazz. So, well, uh, we've rambled for four minutes now, so people should have a chance to have gotten in because, again, it's called iCritic Live because we do premieres. But let's talk about the five, maybe six Oscar nominations that would really make my morning. And, you know, actually, we're going to do six. What the heck? And the number six um, Oscar nomination that would really make my day would be if Joe Hisaishi got his first Oscar nomination for best score for The Boy and the Heron. Now, Joe Hisaishi has been scoring Hayao Miyazaki films pretty much uh, since the beginning uh, excluding like the castle of Cagliostro, which was a loop on the third movie. But since Nausicaa Valley of the Wind, Joe Hisaishi has been there making music for Hayao Miyazaki. He also has made other scores for other anime, other live action movies. He, he is literally the John Williams of 
Japan. Like, that's the stature he has as a composer. And, look, I know that Oppenheimer score is the favorite to win, and that is a very good score, but I feel like the Boy and the Heron score, that might possibly be the best standalone score out of um, all the movies I've seen this year. Like, that's a score that you can just play it for anyone and it doesn't matter if they've seen the movie or not they will love that music and so i think that would be a great score for the year and you know if it gets nominated i also hope the academy considers uh giving him the win so that's my number six choice now my number five choice i guess this isn't really in any specific order i'm just kind of throwing them out there um, I would love to see Suzumi nominated for Best Animated Feature. Now, in any other category, this would be like a logical thing, like Suzumi would be guaranteed a nomination at the Academy Awards. But we do know that the Best Animated Feature category is voted on differently than other categories. In the past, I think it would have been a lock because animators voted for movies. But it's been open to all members of the Academy and that tends to lead to more mainstream films getting nominated because, well, either the other voting branch has not heard of these smaller films or they let their kids pick. It's been a very, very big problem. And really, if there is ever a year where Disney should not get a nomination for Best Animated Feature, it's this year. Look, I like Elemental. It's a very good movie. There are better animated films. And I didn't like Wish at all, so I don't think... Wish should be with an earshot of being nominated, although we've seen it get nominated at, like, the Critics' Choice Awards and the Golden Globes. Well, you'll notice the Annie Awards, shout out Disney for the first time in years, goes to show the quality of work that Disney's been doing this year. So, unfortunately, I do think uh, a Disney film will take that slot. And by the way, if you're a fan of Nimona, don't be surprised if Nimona also gets shut out because the Academy might just nominate both Elemental and Wish. That would be a travesty. That would be, like, such a waste of nomination slots. But it would make me very happy if Suzumi got nominated for Best Animated Feature. Now then, my number four uh, nomination that would definitely make my morning would be if Zac Efron got nominated for Best Actor. Now, I think this is a complete long shot because he has not gotten any nominations so far, but Zac Efron gave the kind of transformative performance in The Iron Claw that makes you go, he's no longer a boy, he is an actor. And you know, we laughed, because I grew up with a high school musical movies. I'm old enough to remember them premiering on TV, and I was in high school. And I, I kind of enjoyed them, to be honest. Um, I think I liked the first and the third one the best. The second one was kind of weird, because it was summer vacation, and so they're not in school, but, yeah, you know, whatever. And the thing is, Zac Efron was the pretty boy in those movies, and we all sensed he would probably have a career going forward, but we felt like, well, he's going to be like um, the Matthew McConaughey when he grows older. He's going to be someone with a great face that doesn't have much acting chops. Now, Matthew McConaughey proved us very, very wrong. And now Zac Efron is also proving us very, very wrong. And he has finally come into his own. I wasn't thinking about High School Musical when I was watching The Iron Claw, so I think him getting an Oscar nomination would be a great validation for all the hard work he's put into his career to escape from the Disney umbrella without, you know, going crazy like some of these other Disney Channel stars went. All right, so the number three nomination that would be really great, in my opinion, would be Hayao Miyazaki for Best Director. And I'm a little disappointed that this has not been discussed more. I know that no director has ever been nominated for directing an animated feature before. I, I know that. So maybe that's why it's not being talked about. But in every review that you read about The Boy and the Heron, everybody mentions what a personal film this is. Like, no one else could have made The Boy and the Heron the way uh, it was made except for Miyazaki because... He is literally sharing his perspective on life and family and his career and the future of what he has built and it potentially going away when he's gone. Like, The Boy and the Heron, whether you like that film or not, and there's not a lot of people who dislike it, but that is a movie that is Miyazaki. He has literally poured his 
soul into this movie. And no one else could have made it that way. And so I think that that is worthy of being nominated for Best Director. Now, again, this is such a long shot, but I think that would make for a great nomination. Okay, so the fifth nomination that um, I would love to see, and honestly, this is the one that probably has the biggest shot of actually happening come Oscar morning, would be America Ferreira for Best Supporting Actress in Barbie. Now, I do like Barbie. It's not going to make my top 10 list. In fact, I got to call Rachel and schedule for us to do an episode of the top 10 best films of the year list. But I do, here's the thing. I love Barbie. It's not my, on my top 10 list, but it's a very good movie. Now, Margot Robbie's been getting a lot of Best Actress nominations. Personally, I would be okay if she wasn't nominated for Best Actress for Barbie. I don't think she was that spectacular. I'd rather that nomination go to Fantasia or to um, Annette Benning. I think they gave much better performances than Margot Robbie, but I also know that Margot Robbie is kind of the driving force behind Barbie. She is literally Barbie, therefore she will probably get in. But I think America Ferreira is the heart of Barbie. I believe she is the character that the audiences latch on to the most. She's the one that we sympathize and relate to. Uh, James Cameron said that she gave that one speech about women that basically in a few minutes summed up the world's feelings about women since the beginning of time. And, and it was such a great moment. And she gives that speech. And so that should be a moment where it's like, look, we give her an Oscar nomination for this. But she has really not snuck in that much unless the awards show have given more than five nominations. Still, she's the closest because she actually has been nominated. Uh, so has Suzumi for the record. But America Ferrara might actually get in. I mean, but it's still a long shot, which is why I'm mentioning it here, because I would just love to see it happen. And then the final nomination that would make me really, really happy would be the Iron Claw. Now, this is the release from A24. And the thing is, they, they tried to mount an Oscar campaign for this movie, but I think they started way too late, because the Iron Claw is not a movie that opens big, per se. This is a movie that you slowly roll out. You open it in October or November to a few theaters. You get the buzz going. Then you do a little bit of a push out through Thanksgiving and you get more people talking and you get more people buzzing about it. And then it plays well through the holiday season. To open this in Christmas when most of the decisions have been made and the screeners some people didn't even get those screeners in time to check out their ballots for some of the other awards shows. So the Iron Claw it was always at a major disadvantage. And that is a shame because if any movie should be a Best Picture contender, it's this one. This is the kind of drama that used to be so popular with audiences. And I believe that this one could be popular with the audiences. But I think it did need that awards push to really get out there for the audience. So it, it might still happen. The Academy Awards does have... 10 slots so they could sneak it in there somewhere but I've just got a bad feeling that it's really not going to go anywhere so I uh I have to put this as well this is a no guts no glory call I'd love to see it happen but it's also super unlikely so um let's recap so the six nominations that would definitely make my day but these are complete long shots would be Joe Hisaishi for best score for the boy and the heron Suzumi for Best Animated Feature, Zac Efron for Best Actor in The Iron Claw, Hayao Miyazaki for Best Director in The Boy and the Heron, America Ferrara for Best Supporting Actress, Barbie, and The Iron Claw for Best Picture. Will any of these actually happen? I guess we will find out tomorrow morning. And with that, we are going to end this episode again. Check us out on X tomorrow. We're going to be doing a live, uh, Q well, not Q&A, but a live discussion about these nominations. You can find me at Kevin T. Rod, and I hope to see you there. As for this show, feel free to leave a review, comment if you're watching this on YouTube, as well as give it a like and subscribe on your podcast platform of choice. I will talk to you all later. Flame responsibly. Take care.